asked me the other day, what's the difference between a shear and a lecture? I was inclined to say I don't know, because even when I lecture, supposedly, I'm giving a shear. A lecture is an independent exposition of ideas. A shear is a text-oriented analysis which allows the ideas to crystallize. You elicit the concepts that need to be understood, that need to be discussed from the sources themselves, rather than presenting these concepts as an independent entity. So for us, of course, that means relating anything that we say, any proposition that is put forward, relating it to some source in Torah Shabbat or Torah Shabbat And that determines, of course, the structure of this year as of any year. That you can't take a step without coming back to some source in the Torah, in Chazal, or whatever. Now, you all know that on the night of the 15th of Nisan, everyone is supposed to drink four cups of wine. The Mishnah that you have in front of you, the first Mishnah in the last paragraph of Pesachim, says, Atilu Oni Shebi Yisrael, Lo Yochal Atshiyese, Lo Yifchasulo Meharba Koso Shel Yayin. Atilu Min Hatam Chut. Everybody must have four cups of wine. If the Gavoyit Stoka aren't thoughtful enough to provide it, then it's up to the indigent person here, the Oni, to see to it on his own. That's Rashi and Tosus in explaining the phrase, Lo Yifchasulo. That's not our concern now. But here you have the statement that there is no exception. Even an Oni who is dependent upon the kindness of others should have Arba Kosos of Yayin. Gemara later in that Kutches, Omer Abishur ben Levi adds, Noshim Chayavos Arba Kosos Halalu, She'afhein Hoyu Ba'oso Hanes. Ban Kutches Amid Aleph, the top of Kutches Amid Beis. Noshim Chayavos Arba Kosos Halalu, She'afhein Hoyu Ba'oso Hanes. We need a special reason, if not for this reason, that the women were involved in the miracle of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, then, according to Tosus, they would not be obligated to drink four cups of wine on Pesach night. We need a special reason for this, as that little Tosus there at the top indicates. And then later on in that Kukhes from Inveis, there's a brysa, that says, Hakol Chayovim the Arba Kosos Halalu, Echa Hanoshim, the Echa Noshim, the Echa Tinokos. Everybody is obligated to drink four cups of wine on the night of the 15th of Nisan, men, women, and children. Children, of course, only are capable of understanding. Shehir Lachino. The Yerushalmi adds, gives us some very striking vignettes of Chachme Israel, who found the consumption of alcohol difficult. Nevertheless, they did not <coughs> seek an exemption from the mitzvah of Arba Kosos of wine on the night of Pesach. And Yerushalmi described, as I say very vividly, the hangovers that they had. One had a headache until Shavuos. <laughs> <laughs> So this mitzvah is a universal one. Now, these four kosos of wine are associated with specific mitzvos or specific paths of the Seder. You just don't sit down and drink four cups of wine consecutively. The Gemara says, and this you have in front of you, it's a very important but relatively unexplored statement of the Gemara that Kuf Yud Zayin on the base, that's the top of page four in the sources that you have. Gemara. Amalor Rav Khanan the 
Mishnah says, Mosgulo ko shlishi. They pour the third cup for the person making the Seder. Mivarech al mizono. So on this third cup, he says, Birkas hamazon. So the Mishnah said, Gemara says, Omala Rabchanan Larova Shmani no. From this Mishnah, apparently, we're in a position to resolve a question which had been discussed earlier in the Gemara and Pesachim and not clearly resolved. Namely, that Shmamino Brocha, Birkas Hamozon, Tuna Kos. That when you recite Birkas Hamozon, you should use a cup of wine and have a kosher Brocha. In other words, just like the Kiddush, you have Sidu Brochos al Kos, the Brochos which you recite are said over a cup of wine. At the Birkas Erusin, you have Sidu Brochos al Hakos. Similarly, Birkas Hamazon should be al Hakos. The Gemara says this is an apparent inference. We can conclusively infer from our Mishnah that says, Mosgulo ko shlishi muvarech al Mizono, that we use the third coast for Birkas Hamazon. Apparently, that's conclusive proof for the halachic proposition that Birkas Hamazon to Una Kos, that Birkas Hamazon always needs a kosher bracha. So the Gemara rejects this and says, no, there's no conclusive proof here. Omale, Rava answered Rabbanon, Arba Kase Tiknu Rabbanon Derecherus, Kol Chad Vachad Navid Be Mitzvah. Literally, Hachamim introduced the Takana, ordained that we should drink four cups of wine. Derecherus will bracket for the moment. You can read it with or without this phrase. They ordained that we should have four cups of wine. So, in addition, Kol Chad Vachad, each one of the four cups, we perform a mitzvah that's associated with the cup of wine or we drink the cup of wine in connection with a mitzvah. Chol chad v'chad, each one of these four cups of wine, we do a mitzvah while we drink the kos. What mitzvah? Any mitzvah whatsoever? Chol chad v'chad, each one not a mitzvah. Are you free to choose which mitzvahs you want to associate with the cup of wine, or, or, what's the alternative, I think rather evidently so, that each mitzvah must be related to the main theme of Sipu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Or else, if this were not so, if by the phrase, kol chad v'chad navid be mitzvah, it was meant that you're free to choose any mitzvah you want, and relate it just to make a Bore Pri HaGofen in connection with any mitzvah, this would be a rather meaningless assignment of functions. But when the Gemara says that four kosos were introduced, and in order to give some coherence and structure to the fulfillment of the mitzvah of Arba Kosos, so we associate each kos with a mitzvah. Take a look here at Rashi. It's very, very helpful. Rashi says, the last line in Rashi, kol chad v'chad navid be mitzvah, klomar ro'ui sheye osa bo mitzvah. It's appropriate, it's proper, that a mitzvah should be done, should be performed in connection with each of the four kosos. Haval dish'ar yimos hashana and other occasions when you're going to say Virkis Hamazon, lo bo kos. She'af kan, even here, in this context, pay attention to these few words of Rashi. She'af kan, even here, in this context, ein hakos bo bishvil Virkas Hamazon. Literally, the kos is not introduced. We don't have a kos for the sake of Virkas Hamazon. So using Rashi's language, we should ask, Why do we have the kos? Rashi says that we can't answer the question, you can't resolve the issue 
whether Birkas Hamazon requires a kosher bracha from this Mishnah. So Rashi is very emphatic and says, She'af Khan, the last phrase in Rashi, Ein hakos ba b'shvil Birkas Hamazon. The cup of wine here, the third cup of wine, is not introduced for the sake of Birkas Hamazon. So I ask you, why is it introduced? In the language of Rashi, Bishvil ma bo hakos, if not for the sake of Birkas Hamazon. What's the answer? It comes for Derecherus. Gemara says, Arba kase tiknu rabbanon Derecherus. The kos comes for Derecherus. The Rashbam earlier in Daf Kuches, where you have the phrase Derecherus, says, Mitzvah Bishle Musa. In other words, the kos comes not for Birkas Hamazon, but for the sake of Sipu Yitzias Mitzrayim. In order to have an ideal kiyom, an ideal fulfillment of the mitzvah of Pesach night, you should integrate the drinking of the four cups of wine with the mitzvah of Mosapir Yitzias Mitzrayim. This mitzvah is the same in the Torah. Mosapir Benisim and Itlo Sheiru Lavoseinu that's the language of the Rambam, beginning of Perak Zion, Hilfus Pamitsumatsa, Allah Aleph. That clear? I think that's that's the basis of the Shia, is the answer to this question of Rashi. Sha'in Hakos Ba Bishbil Birka Samazal. The Kos is not introduced here for the sake of Birka Samazal. So why is it introduced? It's introduced for the sake of Sipu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. That's what Derecherus means. And I told you, you can read this, or you should read it twice. Arba kase tiknu rabbana, kol chad v'chad nazit be mitzvah. Then, the Derecherus supplies information which we would not otherwise have, that the Kosos were introduced as an expression of Cherus, as part of the theme of Sipu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So it seems to me that this Gemara and that Kuf Yud Zayin Amid Beis, which we just looked at, and I repeat, as far as I've been able to see, it's not been explored much by Rishonim or Aharonim. This Gemara compels us to examine and to determine in what sense we may say about each of the mitzvos associated with the four cups that they relate to Sipu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. In other words, how does each one of the four cups, not the drinking of the wine, but the recitation, the part of the Haggadah, the recitation which accompanies the drinking of the wine, how does this recitation, four parts, augment the mitzvah of Sipu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim? What new dimensions are added to the fulfillment of this mitzvah of the Higadus Olamit Lubincha. What unperceived perspectives that are there, but that we may have overlooked, that we may not have been attentive to, are forthcoming as a result of the association of the four cups with four different parts of what we call the Haggadah. So let's go, that's the, our task for the night. The, Try to explain how the four recitations that are linked with the four cups fulfill this purpose. Now, on page six of the handout, we have here the first halacha in the Shulchan Aruch concerning pace of night. And this halacha, I think, is the best introduction to our understanding of Kiddush. What we need to do now, I repeat, just so you'll follow along with me, we're going to take each of the four recitations, four parts of what is loosely, I'll qualify it as we go along, loosely called the Haggadah, and see how each one of these contributes something distinctive to the theme of Sipu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, so that by drinking the four cups of wine at these appointed times, rather than just, as the Gemara says earlier, 
Shison Bubas Achas. If one should drink down four cups of wine, one after the other, he has some kiyum. What it is is Machlokas in between the Rashbam, Tosfis, and the Rambam, and the Rif. But he has some kiyum. Shison Bubas Achas Yotza something. But what is the ideal kiyum of integrating the Arba Kosos with these four recitations? Kol Chad V'chad Navid Bein Mitzvah. So it means Kiddush, and then the second cup, which presumably is the easiest, I think everybody would assume it is, I'll show you that it's rather subtle. The second cup is the Haggadah, the third cup is Pirkas HaMazon, and the fourth cup remains to be seen, how that should be described. Now this halacha, we'll take a look, first simon in Tampayim Beis in Shulchan Aruch, says, that one should not make Kiddush face of night until it's dark, until well after Shkir. That's what the Shulchan Aruch says. Everything should be prepared. This has to do with Zrizim, which was part of the Shir I gave this afternoon on Shabbos Agadol, Shmarta Mesam Matzos, Shmarta Mesam Mitzvos. This is Zrizus. Everything should be prepared. Kedei lefol miyan shetechshach. Afim hu beveisa medrash yokum. That's reference to the Gemara says about Rabbi Kiva, who said about himself that an Erev Pesach, he never, Erev Pesach, an Erev Yom Kippur, he never would dally, even in the Beisa Medrash, even if you were in the middle of the Shia, in order not to delay the beginning of the Seder. But then Machaber adds, of a lo yomar kiddush ad shetechshach. Kiddush should not be said until it's well into the night. Now, the Mogin of Ram and the Taz, I thought it would be worthwhile for you to have this in front of you, won't take too long, offer different reasons for this statement. In other words, the halacha is clear. The halacha is that lo yomar kiddush, why is this so? I mean, ordinarily, you all know, there are many people who do it, particularly in the summertime, you're Makabal Shabbos, so you early. So you make Kiddush early. It's not such a simple halacha, but in any event, it can be done. So one is not at all reluctant to make Kiddush of Shabbos uh, an hour before sunset, whatever can't be too much before, but an hour before, 45 minutes before sunset. That should not be done on the first night of Pesach, or in the second night, as far as we're concerned. That's what the halacha of the Shulchan Aruch, lo yoma kiddush ad shetefshach. Why is this so? Mechaba doesn't explain, and it needs explanation because it flies in the face of this general practice that one may say Kiddush earlier. Colloquially, you say, you can be Makabal Shabbos and make Kiddush earlier. So the Mogin Avram says as follows, the Koshel Kiddush hu echod me arba kosos, the kulon tzrichim lios balayla. The kos of Kiddush is counted as one of the four cups of wine. The drinking of the four cups of wine, like all other parts of the mitzvos of the night of the 15th of Nisan, have to be done at night. They can't be done earlier, they can't be done later. If one should drink four cups of wine and recite the Haggadah in the morning of the first day of Pesach, it's certainly the first day of Pesach, and it's one Kedusha Sayom from night until the end of the next day. It's one day yontif. But there's certain, let's say in sukkahs, so any time you sit in the sukkah on the first day, it's a fulfillment of a mitzvah, kiyam a mitzvah of sukkah of the first day of sukkah. Night, morning, makes no difference. Pesach night is a special mitzvah that certain things have to be done. You all know that we said, like the Ramah says, not like the Krav, but like the Ramah says to say, Avadim Hayinu and Shabbos Agadol in the afternoon. So you said it today, the path that Yochum Erish Chodesh, Talmud Loma Bayom Ahu, Ibayom Ahu, Yochum Bibod Yom, Talmud Loma Bashash, Shematzo, Morum, Nochim Lufanecha. 
that the mitzvah of Sipu Yetzirah Mitzrayim and the mitzvah of Four Kosos that goes with it and the eating of the matzah is only on the night of the 15th. So the night of the 15th means night. It has nothing to do with when you may, by an extension or by an anticipation, augment the Kedusha Sayom. If you want, you can, this Friday afternoon, daven Kabbalah Shabbos and Marev a little earlier and have an, a, a tosfus for Kabbalah Shabbos, for Kedusha Sayom. But it is not yet to shosh and matzo moru munochen lufanecha. That has to be at night. That's what the Mogen Avram says, that since the coast of Kiddush is one of the four kosos, and all of them have to be at night, so a half hour before Shkia is no better, is not superior to Shabbos morning, to the morning of Yontif. Both have Kedusha Sayon, both are Yontif. But here there's a special requirement that these mitzvahs should be fulfilled on the night of the 15th. That's the explanation that the Mogin Avram gives to the Halacha of the Mechaber. According to the Mogin Avram, then it would follow that the Kiddush itself may be said earlier. If you are inclined to Chazonis, for example, and you say in Yiddish, and you want to say a long Kiddush that will take you 10, 15 minutes till you finish singing it, then the Kiddush itself may be said earlier. The Magen Avram doesn't say anything about Kiddush. He only says that when you finish, it should be Chashecha, it should be nighttime, so that the drinking of the cup of wine, which is one of the Arba Kosos, should be Balayla. If you look at the Taz, you'll see the Taz gives a different reason for the Halacha of the Mechaber. The Taz says, Achetechshach, the Matzah Dumya de Pesach, Bilsiv al Matzah Simrorim Yochlu. Matzah is comparable to Pesach. Vaha Pesach, the Korban Pesach, Eino Nechal Elo Malaylo. And therefore, what you have to fill in something here in parentheses, and therefore, that's the result of the analogy. If you say matzah dumya the Pesach and Pesach einu nechal ela balayla, the carbon Pesach could be eaten only at night. Therefore, matzah also can be eaten only at night. So, what does this have to do with Kiddush? We're talking about Kiddush. What's the connection with Kiddush? So, the Taz adds the hakiddush tzorich sheyia tishoah. Kiddush should be said at a time that is appropriate for the eating of the matzah. So what is the explanation of the Taz? How does this differ from the Bhagavad of Ram? The Taz's explanation is based on the halacha that you all know of Kiddush Bukom Suda. That the reason for Kiddush is as a prelude to make it possible for you to have the Suda. Kiddush is a matir. This is a subject of many shiurim that the Rav used to say. Kiddush is a matir for eating on Shabbos. That's why you must have Kiddush at night. You must have Kiddush in the morning. You cannot eat before Kiddush. Kiddush is a matir. So the purpose of Kiddush is the Suda. Kiddush paves the way for Suda Shabbos, for Suda Yom Tov. So according to the Taz, not only the drinking of the cup has to be at night, but the recitation of the Kiddush itself is also at night, because the Kiddush, as I said, is a kind of prologue. It introduces the Suda, and the very essence of the Suda in face of night is Matzah, as derived from the analogy to Pesach, the Matzah Tumya to Pesach. Okay? There are two explanations, the Mogan of Ra and the Taz. Now, it's possible to explain the Taz a little differently with the help of a difficult Rambam. The Rambam is on page 5 of the sources in front of you. That's the first halacha of Karak Zion of the Stomach and Maxa. The Rambam says, 
a famous, very enigmatic, very challenging Rambam that many discuss. Mitzvah Saseshel Torah, the Mitzvah Doraiso, the Sapir, the Nisim, the Niflos. Right here. This phrase is ambiguous, as I pointed out in a different year. can refer to the time of the mitzvah. In other words, this mitzvah is fulfilled on the night of the 15th of Nisan. Or the phrase Baleil Chamisha Subanisan may qualify the scope of the Haggadah. With Sapir Benisim and Iflos, we tell the story of the miracles that happened on the 15th of Nisan, but not in the rest of Pesach. In other words, Kriyas Yamsuf is not part of the Sequitias Mitzrayim for Pesach night. This may very well be the Pshat of the Rambam. With Sapir Benisim and Iflos, of the 15th of Nisan. And as a matter of fact, in the Rambam's Haggadah, all that part about Kama Malos Tovos Lamakam Aleinu is missing. The Rambam doesn't have that part of the, in the Haggadah because he interpreted Lusapir Benisim Niflos, Baleil Chamisha Asur, as something that determines, that defines the scope of the mitzvah of Sifu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. The mitzvah is to recount, to narrate, to analyze the Nisim and the flows that happened only on that night, but not on all of Pesach. In any event, whatever this Leil Chamisha is, the Rambam quotes here a Pasuk which is not quoted by all other Rishonim. Zohar Sayom Hazer Hashi Yitzhosa Mimitzrayim. That Pasuk is reserved for the mitzvah of mentioning Yitzhosa Mitzrayim every day according to Rashi and Chumash, for example. Whereas the Pasuk, which the Rambam doesn't quote until Allah obeys, the Yadat al Bincha, is what all Rishonim quote as the basis for the mitzvah of Sipur Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. But then the difficulty or the challenging aspect of this Allah and the Rambam is increased by the analogy that he brings. Kamoshanema Zohar Es Yom HaShabbos. What's the connection between just the word Zohor? I mean, I can think of other psukim that begin with the word Zohor. What led the Rambam to just the stream of consciousness? He says, just as the Pesach says, remember the day in which you left Mitzrayim, Zohor Sayom Hazesh Yitzhosem Mitzrayim. That's enough. Kamo Shenema, as is also said, Zohor Es Yom HaShabbos. What's the connection between the two? So, if, if you were to look in the, the Rambam Hilchas Shabbos, not important, Rambam Hilchas Shabbos, Perk Choftes, says as follows about the mitzvah of Kiddush. It says it's a mitzvah to say Kiddush, Katshehu Bidvarim. Zohar is Yom HaShavos L'Katsho. Rambam says, Katshehu Biknisoso Bitsioso. Sanctify it at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. The Rambam's view is that Havdola is also Doraisa. Very much. Katshehu Biknisoso Bitsioso. This is Perk Choftes of Hil Cheshavos Halacha Alam. Shenema Zohar is Yom HaShavos L'Katsho. And then the Rambam has this very striking phrase, Klomar Zochrehu Zechiras Sheva Vekidush. I'll read to you again the whole thing, which I just reconstructed. Mitzvah Sasei Mena Torah, Lekadish Es Yom HaShavos, Bidvarim Shenema Zochor Es Yom HaShavos Lekadshe. That's the second pasuk that the Rambam added here in Hilfus Chomitz Matzah. Remember the Shabbos day, to sanctify it, Likacho. What does it mean, Likacho? So here the Rambam gives a very striking, it's an unforgettable formulation. Zafrehu Zafiras Sheva Likidush. When you have the mitzvah of Likadish as Yom HaShabosh Bidvari, as a result of the command, as a result of the Pasuk, Zohor, remember the day, 
Zohar is Yom HaShavos Lekacho, the Rambam says there are two components to Kiddush. So stop to think for a moment and make Kiddush every Friday night. Let's see if your own reflection at the time coincides with the way the Rambam defines, the way the Rambam understood this phrase, Lekacho. Zohrehu Zechiras Sheva Kiddush. Remember it, the day, in such a way, Zohrehu Zechiras, remember it in such a way that it will contain the following two elements. One, Shevach, and two, Kiddush. Shevach means praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for bequeathing the Shabbos to us. That requires Shevach. Shevach to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for giving us the Shabbos. Kiddush means a proclamation of what Shabbos is all about. A proclamation of the Kiddush Hayom. You see, the bracha that we make for Kiddush, we make a Birkas Hanan in Borekriya Gofen, because we're going to drink wine. Then what's the second bracha of Kiddush? How are we to define this? How would you classify the second bracha of Kiddush? It's not a Birkas and Mitzvah, because it doesn't relate to a specific action. The best proof is that in the morning, Shabbos morning, you just make a Borek Priya Gothen, nothing else. Anything else you say is just psukim. But in the morning, Kiddush consists of a Birkas Hananin, Borek Priya Gothen. What's the content, what's the function of the second bracha in Kiddush that we make on Leil Shabbos, Friday night? So this bracha is not a Birkas mitzvah. it's more like, it says an analogy, the bracha that is recited at a bris milah. You also have exactly the same structure. You make a Borek Kriya Gofen, and then the bracha she Kiddush, she did the Beten, the Chok B'Sheir of Som, the Tzed Tzotza, Chosam Bos, Bris Kodesh, and so forth. This is a special Birkas HaShevach, or if you like, a Bracha, to use Halachic Shagin, on the creation of a new situation. Chaloshen Ben Bris. The Bracha HaShekidosh Yedid Mibetan, and the Bris Mila, is not a Birkas HaMitzvah. The Birkas HaMitzvah has already been recited before, by the Mohel and by the Father. That's the Birkas HaMitzvah. The bracha that follows, Borek Priya Gofen, and the bracha Shekidesh Yedid Mi Beten, that's a bracha on a Chaloshen Ben Bris, on the creation of a new situation of Kedusha, that this eight-year-old, eight-day-old, or whenever the Bris takes place, has entered into Kedusha Yisrael. He is now a full-fledged Ben Bris, even though there is a Kedusha that comes with birth, a Rasa Vleidasa Bikdusha, this Kedusha is completed, is complemented by Knisasa the Risa Shalav Ramavina. Similarly, in Kiddush, you have a very carefully worded declaration of Kedusha Sayom. That's what the Ramba means by Zechira Shevach the Kiddush. The bracha focuses, it highlights for us the unique features of the day and the impact that this day should have on us. In other words, it's a bracha, if you like, on the chefts of Shabbos. That's the way I would describe the bracha of Kiddush, according to the Rambam. Zafrehu zechiras shevach the Kiddush. Those three words. Zafrehu zechiras Shavach the Kiddush. It's a bracha on the thefts of Shabbos. So similarly, for the Kiddush on Pesach night, the Rambam says that this Kiddush is not just a ceremonial way of ushering in the day, but it's actually the beginning of Sipu Yetzirah's Mitzrayim. Kiddush on the night of Pesach, on Leil Chamisha Asa, is the beginning of Sipu Yetzirah's Mitzrayim. Why? Because Sipu Yetzirah's Mitzrayim means not only to tell a story, but to, first of all, proclaim the day. 
You have to proclaim the day on which these events that you are going to be recounting happen. You proclaim, you call attention to the unique features of the day on which all these miraculous events occurred. So the ushering in of the day, of the 15th of Nisan, and this proclamation of its special Kedusha Sayom, this is part of the secret Yesmich Rani. Look, so therefore you understand the same conclusion as the Taz, that this Kiddush also has to be at night, together with the rest of what? Not because of the Sudha, but now according to this Rambam, the Taz, the conclusion of the Taz is because the Kiddush Hayom is part of Sikri Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Right? According to the Magen of Rome, the recitation of Kiddush is not an issue. That can be said any time. It's the drinking of the cup that's important, because the drinking of the cup of Kiddush is one of the Arba Kosos. According to the Taz, it's the Suda that counts, the eating of the Matzah. And since the Kiddush is to prepare the Suda, is to be a Matir for the Suda, so the Kiddush has to be at the same time. You can have no disjunction, no temporal disjunction between Kiddush and Suda. According to the Rambam that I'm showing you now, the Rambam Muhammad Matzah, who quotes the Pasuk, Zohar Siyom HaShabbos, in connection with Zohar Sayom Hazea Shiyatsosan Vimitzrayim, he's telling us that the function of Kiddush generally, this is an important halacha per se, that the function of Kiddush generally is not a birkas a mitzvah, but it's a bracha and a chalosh shame. On Shabbos, it's the chalosh shame of Kedusha Sayom. I gave you an analogy of bris milah, there than the chalosh shame of ben bris. And on Pesach, it's in the chalosh shame of the beginning of that miraculous night of the 15th of Nisan, on which there's a mitzvah, l'sapeh benisim niflos. So this mitzvah begins with the proclamation of the day. I want to read you a midrash which I recently came across. This halacha I've discussed many, many times over the years, but it's only now that I have an explicit, I think, an explicit midrash that I've not seen cited in connection with this Rambam. The midrash is on, in Shmos, on the Pasuk, Zohar Sayom Hazet HaShietzosim Yitzrayim. Oma HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lemoshe, Hazher Lehem Yisrael. Issue the following command, not warning. Azhara means a command, a mitzvah. Hazher Lehem Yisrael. Shem Shebarasi Esa'olam. Vamarki Lehem Yisrael. Lizkar Yom HaShabbos. Zeche Lamase Bereshis, Shenema Zohar Es Yom HaShabbos, just as I created the world, and I told Bnei Israel to remember the day of Shabbos, Shenema Zohar Es Yom HaShabbos, Kach Heyu Zohrim Es Hanisim Shasisi Lochem B'Mitzrayim. There's an analogy here. There's something symmetrical. Just as a Kodesh Baruch Hu told Moshe, instruct the people of Yisrael that they should make Kiddush, remember the day of Shabbos, Shenema Zohar Siyom HaShabbos. Similarly, Kach hayu Zohrim HaSanisim Shasisi Lachem B'Mitzrayim V'Zichru Layom Shiyitzasa Misham And remember the day at which the Exodus took place, Shenema Zohar Siyom HaZeh Shiyitzasa Mitzrayim. That, I think, is perhaps the best source for the Rambam. Okay, let's go for a few minutes to the third coast, because like the first coast of Kiddush, the third coast is also associated with a standard mitzvah. Presumably the second and the fourth, everybody here will be ready to explain the connection. As I told you, the, the theme that we're pursuing is following the Gemara Daf Kuf Yud Zayin that says Arba Kaset Kinu Rabbanon Kol Chad V'Chad Navet Be Mitzvah, and Rashi says the, the Mitzvah, the third coast is not for Birkas Hamazon. Ain't no Bav Bishul Birkas Hamazon, and we added what is its purpose? Bishul Mavu Bav for Sifrei Tzias Mitzrayim. So we have to see also Kiddush. I've just tried to explain to you why the first coast is properly 
intrinsically associated with Kiddush. It's not just an accidental or an incidental juxtaposition, but Kiddush is, plays a role in sequence Yitzhak Mitzrayim. What about Birkas HaMazon? How does Birkas HaMazon become integrated into the sequence Yitzhak Mitzrayim? What would you say? At least on two levels. There are two reasons why, why Birkas HaMazon is properly, is appropriately assigned one of the Kosos because it does play a role in sequence Yitzhak Mitzrayim. What would you say, anybody? First of all, we mentioned Tzias Mitzrayim in the second bracha, right? How shall Tzisonu Hashem Elokeinu Be'eretz Mitzrayim with Tzisonu Be'beis HaHodim? We give thanks and praise God for bringing us out, on page 29 in the Haggadah, from the land of Egypt and redeeming us from the house of bondage. So there is an explicit haskara of the theme of Yitzhak Mitzrayim here. But I think we need to go one more step beyond this mention of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, because this is almost lost in the larger complex that constitutes Birkus HaMuzzam. See, the same halacha which creates the obligation of Hoda'a of thanksgiving to God says that this expression of Hoda should always be all-inclusive. You don't thank God for a specific kindness, for a specific act of benevolence from which you have benefited. That would be a lack of gratitude. The best proof, it seems to me, is the Matveya HaBracha, the formula that's used for Birkas HaGomel. Somebody who recovers from a serious illness, somebody who is released from prison, to use the examples of the Gemara, somebody who's lost in the desert and returns to a civilized, inhabited part of the world. So he makes a bracha. What does he say in this bracha, Birkas HaGomel? He doesn't say, Baruch HaTah Hashem Shehot Seisani Mi Beis HaSurim. Baruch HaTah Hashem Rofei Cholim. He says, Shegumalani Kol Tov. Agome L'chayovim Tovos. We speak in the most comprehensive term. What I'm telling you is my own swear. Please check it out. It's consistent or not. Agome L'chayovim Tovos. Shegumalani Kol Tov. And you all know the response of those who hear it is Mishegumolcha Kol Tov. All goodness. We use a specific occasion as a pretext for <clears throat> reciting or for expressing our total indebtedness to Kaddish Baruch Hu. To do less than that, as I said, would be a kfui tova. One would be an ingrate to do less than that, because while focusing, or while the immediate occasion for the bracha may be some traumatic experience, which one has just lived through, that's the immediate occasion. That's the catalyst for the bracha of the Birkas HaGomel, but the content of Birkas HaGomel is a reminder to the person and to all who hear it that we are the recipient of innumerable kindnesses of the Kaddish Baruch Hu. They're so innumerable that we can't really begin to count them. So we say, HaGomel Chayovim Tovos, he who makes us the recipient of so many acts of kindness. The same here for Birkas Hoda in the Birkas HaMazon. The Gemara in Bracha says, even though this is a Bracha, what is the second Bracha of Birkas HaMazon? It's Birkas Haaretz, right? It's Hazan Esakol and then Birkas Haaretz. But the Gemara in Bracha says that Kol She'ena Omer Bris the Torah, Birkas Haaretz, Lo Yotze Yedei Chavaso. You can't have an overly restricted Birkas Hoda, even though the immediate theme or the central theme of this second bracha of Birkas HaMazon is Birkas Haaretz, but we include in it the whole scenario leading up to Birkas Haaretz, 
as well as its essence, which is Torah. So we start with the son of the base of Adim, Moshev the son of Hashem Elokeinu merits Mitzrayim, and we conclude with Birka Sa'aretz, but you have priests with Torah, because without them, the Birka Sa'aretz would be incomplete. Now let's come to the second kos, which is apparently the easiest and the most explicit. This everybody to take for granted is the essence of Sisko Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. So how many parts are there to this second post, to the second mitzvah? What would you say? How many parts? Everybody's acquainted with the Haggadah. How many parts are there to this mitzvah? Any suggestions? One, two, three, four. One of those. <laughs> what would you say? Go here. I assume I'll answer on behalf of all of you. I assume that the answer would be three. And if you examine the Haggadah, as well as the underlying sources in the Gemara, there would appear to be here a three-tiered structure. The first part is what we call Sipur, the story itself, Sipur Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. That's Masav Rebeliezer at the bottom of page 9, top of page 10. Well, you misaprim v'yitziyas mitzrayim, koloso halayla. They were engaged in a very detailed narrative and analysis of the story of Yitziyas mitzrayim. And as you all know, according to the Rith and the Rambam, this has a two tracks. What we call the Gemara says, Maskil b'shevach, Maskil b'gnus, and the sign b'shevach, is on two tracks. There is the political and the spiritual. And the Rambam says, Kol Hamar Beth, at the end of Halacha Aleph, Afilu Chachomim Gedolim Chayavim Lasafi Vitzias Mitzrayim, the Kol Hamarif Bitvarim Hayeharezem Mishubach. The more you tell about this, the more ideal is the way in which you fulfill the mitzvah. That's one part. What's the second part? The second part, again, I'm sure you all know. I'm just speaking in your behalf. I'm not telling you anything new here. The second part is the halacha, the divrei Torah. This is expressed by the interpretation that we have of Arami Ovi Ovi. This is in page 12 in the Haggadah. Seyumad. Yeah, Shenema, Arami, Ovid, Ovid, Vayer, Yitzrayimah, and then we interpret that. This is a classic instance of Torah Shabal Peh. How you take Psukim and interpret each phrase, each word of the Psukim according to themes of Torah Shabal Peh. Then there's a second part. Just as the Sipur has two tracks, the Gnus and Shevach is on two levels, political and spiritual. The Halacha also has two tracks. There is the drasha, this is a midrash, of Arami Ovid Ovi. And then, what's the second part? No, help me out, Rabbi. What's the second part? Rabbi Gamliel, which is a, the statement of Rabbi Gamliel is a little sheer in its own. This you'll find in the Haggadah here on page 21, and appropriately, it's a big print, because that is as the Mishnah says, Kol Shloam HaShloshet Tvarim Elu Lo Yotzi Yedei Chovoso V'Pesach The Rambam interprets Lo Yotzi Yedei Chovoso means the Chova of Sipu Yitzias Mitzrayim Kol Shloam HaShloshet Tvarim Elu So this is a second component of Torah of the Halacha that goes into the Haggadah The Rambam Lil is particularly important because you see that the halacha includes tamei mitzvos. This is noted by the Rabbeinu Manoach already. Pesach shahayu avuseinu ochlim al shum mo. Why? Do you stop and ask, Kiddush zeh shahanu omrim b'leil Shabbos al shum mo? You don't ask questions about mitzvos. On the higher philosophic level, if you study the Ramam's more in the Buchim, then you will seek to understand the reasons for the mitzvos. Here, the reasons for the mitzvos are a kiyum that's expected of everybody. Everybody's expected to ask the question, al shum why? 
and to answer, to know the explanation. It's not just to know the mitzvah, but you have to know the reason for the mitzvah. This is really the model, it's the paradigm, binyan of, of tame mitzvos, which were developed later by Rishonim and Afroni. So that's the second part of the of halacha. So we have sipur, the narrative, and this itself has a double plot. And then the halacha, this also has two tracks. And what's the third? I said apparently there are three parts that you would all point to. What's the third part? Halel. Third part presumably is halel. Now before suggesting to you that this structure may not be correct, may need modification, I would like to call your attention just to one part of this agoda. Just before, on page 10 in the Haggadah, if you want to take a look, line 10, before introducing the typology of the four sons, Chacha, Rasha, Tam, Meshene, De'Elisho, you have this formula, Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu, Baruch Shenas HaTor Alamo Yisrael. This, as the Rav likes to say, is a kind of Birkas HaTorah. Don't the words remind you of Birkas HaTorah? Shinas HaLanu Astoraso, Shinas HaLanu Toras Emes. Baruch HaMokom Baruch Hu, Baruch Shinas HaTorah Lama Yisrael. Some add Vikdushasa. Baruch Shinas HaTorah Lama Yisrael. It means before we begin the second part, which is going to be the exposition of Arami Ovid Ovi, the Midrash of Arami Ovid Ovi. And again, if you look at the Rambam, just as at the end of Halacha Aleph, he says, Kol Hamarif Bidvarim She'iru V'Shavayu Harezim V'Shubach. Similarly, when he talks about the Midrash of Arami Ovid Ovi, the end of Halacha Dalit, he uses the same phrase exactly. Kol Hamosif Umarif Bidrash Parsha Zu Harezim V'Shubach. The ideal is to have as much detail as you can. The same phrase, exactly, kol hamarich bitvarim, and here he says kol hamosif umarich bitrash parshazu. So the two sections, the sipur and the halacha, both of them should be as detailed and as specific as possible. Before we start this, so we have this phrase. Baruch HaMokom Baruch Hu, Baruch Shinas and Torah Lama Yisrael. That's a kind of Birkis Torah. Now, I want to suggest to you, just a suggestion, if you look at the bottom of page 11, you have another phrase that sounds like a bracha. Baruch Shoda HaTachaso Yisrael, Baruch Hu. Now, this Baruch Shoda HaTachaso Yisrael the immediate context, of course, as the Agatha says, is the way in which HaKadosh Baruch Hu fulfilled his promise to Avraham Avinu. That follows. Kigir yes arafa be'eretz lo lohem, v'avodum v'inu osam arba me'el shana. And they'll be enslaved for 400 years, and then they'll go out. But as you all know, the, they went out not after 400 years, but after how many? 210. The Minyan Redu, Reish Dalit Vok, 210. The Nitzi says very beautifully in his parish in the Haggadah right here, incidentally, that this is the only way in which the Hafkacha, in which the promise of the Kaddish Baruch Hu could have been fulfilled. Because had he waited the full 400 years, they might have stopped looking upon themselves as gerim. The process of assimilation would have been so great, so complete, that they would no longer realize that they are in need of gula. They would no longer realize that they should call out to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. I don't know if you're catching what I'm telling you. The Nitziv says so beautifully that the reason the Shomeh Haftafaso here is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to do a new calculation and substitute 210 for 400 because the Haftacha, the promise was Kigir Yezarach of Eretz Lolohem and as Gerim 
There's hope that they will be redeemed. If the process of assimilation had been more advanced, they would no longer be Geirim, or at least they would no longer look upon themselves as Geirim, and then they would not call out to the Kaddish Baruch. So that's the immediate meaning, of course, of Baruch Shomer HaTafasal Yisrael. But whenever I hear the phrase, Baruch Shomer HaTafasal Yisrael, I associate this with another Haftacha, another Haftacha of Kaddish Baruch Hu. Here I just want to interject incidentally. Uh, Rabbi Yerucham of Mia, uncle of our Mr. Lovitz, that has a comment, one of the Svarim. How are we to understand the notion of Haftacha with regard to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the first place? HaKadosh Baruch Hu needs only to do. He doesn't have to announce. He's not looking for publicity. He doesn't need to be quoted in the... Jewish advocate, and I'm about to perform a mitzvah, I'm about to do something for you. So the purpose of Haftacha on the part of the Kaddish Baruch Hu is to elicit our emunah, our bitacha. For Kaddish Baruch Hu, it's enough just when the act comes, when the geula after Minyan Redu, after 210 years, would take place. The reason this is announced, the reason we have a haftacha, is to elicit bitachon from us and to sustain us. Now, as I said, whenever I hear the phrase, Baruch Shomer HaTafasol Yisrael, I associate it with the promise of HaKadosh Baruch Hu concerning the eternal presence of Torah among Bnei Yisrael. Torah says at the end of Tvarim, It shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are come upon them. This song, Hazinu, shall testify before them as a witness. That it will not be forgotten out of the mouths of their children. Kilosi shachach mipizaro. This is the haftach of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Rashi, if you look up the pasuk, it's in Devarim Lamed Aleph. Rashi adds, Harezu haftacha liYisrael. This pasuk, kilosi shachach mipizaro, that it will not be forgotten from the mouths of their children is a promise to Yisrael, She'ein Torah Mishtakachas Mizarom Legamre. This is a promise, an assurance to Bnei Yisrael that the Torah will never be entirely forgotten by their descendants. Harezu Havtochol Yisrael. Now this is not only my association. Throughout history, you can find, I can give you scores and scores of examples of this, that whenever in any generation, whenever people are expressing gratitude to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for providing authentic leadership in Talmud Torah, authentic and inspiring leadership in Torah, this phrase of Baruch Shomer HaTafasol Yisrael is used. Whenever you have reference, I repeat, to such unusual, extraordinary individuals who are steadfast in maintaining the integrity and the supremacy of Torah, you will find the phrase, Baruch Shomer HaTafasol Yisrael. For example, with regard to the Vilna Gaon, if you look in the writings of his sons, whether it's the Hakdamat, the Shulchan or others that we have, in the writings of Reb Chaim Volozhina, the writings of his nephew, Rabbi Avram Simcha Mi'amchislav, all of them use this phrase in referring to the Grot, to the Vilna Gaon. Baruch Shomer HaTafasol Yisrael. Reb Chaim Volozhina concludes his famous letter announcing his intent to establish the Yeshiva in Volozhin. That's a letter, if you haven't read it, you all should read it. It's an unusual, emotional, moving, beautifully crafted document. And he concludes this letter with the following paradox. On one hand, he says, he doesn't believe that he is worthy of success. 
There's no reason for him to assume that he will succeed in this tremendous undertaking to establish the yeshiva in Volozhin for reasons that he indicates at the beginning of the letter. At the same time, he says, he doesn't despair because, and here's his language, v'nishan v'haftachoso yisparach kilos yishochach toras emes v'pizera emes. This is Baruch Shona Haftachos of Israel. He says the only reason that has sustained him to undertake it, and that leads him to think that he'll succeed after all, despite his own unworthiness, is this Baruch Shona Haftachos of Israel. The Nishan Haftachos of Yisbara Kilos Yishachach Torah Emes V'Pizera Emes. Then later, in the next generation, Reb David Tevel, the author of Nachlas David. Seifa and Baba Kama, that's very, very important, says about Reb Chaim Volozhino, Il Molehu Nishtakha Torah Yisrael. So, whenever, as I say, whenever you have the expression of Hodah for Gedola Yisrael, who have played a crucial role, a determining, a defining role in the transmission of Torah, you have the phrase, Baruch Shomeh HaVtachos Ali Yisrael. I think clearly, goes without saying that we say this in our generation about the road. We have a Rikos Yomit. He certainly, when one thinks of what he did for Torah, one has to say, Baruch Shomeh HaVtachos Ali Yisrael. He revived the study of Torah by revealing the beauty and the profundity of Torah. And this way attracted so many who would study and observe it. Anybody who engages in Talmud Torah is part of this chain of Baruch Shomer HaTachos of Israel. In any event, I think that these two are situated here, not accidentally. First, Baruch HaMokom Baruch Hu, which is a kind of Birkas HaTorah, and then after the beginning, you have the Arba Bonim, and the beginning of the story is a second kind, a second association at least. Baruch Shomet of the Fossil Israel. Now let's come back to the threefold structure. If you look at the Rambam, you have it here before you, page five. Halacha Hay. This is a most remarkable statement of the Rambam. The Rambam starts by saying, Kol Mishalom Ashlosh Edvarim Eilu, Leil Chamisha Sol, Yotze Rechel Vosel, Eilu in Pesach Matzel Moro. And he quotes the Mishnah. And then adds the last five words, Udvarim ha'elu kulon yikroim ha'godah. That's surprising for two reasons. On one hand, it's surprising because it seems to be so elementary. The Rambam here is a melamed dardike. Everybody knows what ha'godah is. So what does the Rambam come along and tell us? Udvarim elu heim nikroim ha'godah. That's one question on the Rambam. The other question is, what about Halil? Here the Rambam cuts off. He says that Arami Oved Ovi, which is discussed in Halacha Dalit, and then Rav Gamliel, which is discussed in Halacha Hei, who devarim ha'elu kulan. All these things are called Haggadah. This is what we mean when we speak of Haggadah Shal Pesach. Arami Oved Ovi and the three Halachas of Rav Gamliel properly understood. What about Hallel? Where's Hallel? There's no mention of Hallel here. And if you look further in Halacha Yud, with perfect consistency, the Rambam says, Kol kos the kos me'arba kosos halalu v'varich halal bracha v'fnei asma kos rishon omer alav kiddush hayom You see it here in the second column, Halacha Yud. Kosheni Koreolov es ha What is Hagoda? Not what we think, but the Hagoda which the Ramam defined at the end of Halacha Hey. So again, with perfect consistency, there's no mention of what? Of Halel. Where is Halel here? Koreolov es Hagoda. What about Halel? We said before that there are three parts to the second coast. There's the seaport, 
and there's the halacha, and there's halal. And if you look at the Haggadah, you'll see that apparently there is halal. We say the beginning of halal. The first two is more of halal on page 24 and 25. The key here is the phrase l'fichach, which you have in the Gemara in front of you. I want to move ahead because I keep you till Chatzos. That's good for the Atikoma. On page 3 of the Makoros, the Mishnah says, about halfway down in the Mishnah, l'fichach anach nechayovim lahodos lahalei l'shabeach. Therefore, we are obligated to say halal. This lefichot, this statement of therefore, this causal statement, marks the transition from one level of Sipu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim to another. The first level is an intellectual one. There is an abstract intellectual awareness that certain great miraculous things happen and that we were involved in those things too. Actually, this was said at the very beginning. We begin the Haggadah by saying the Ilu Lo Hotzi on page 9. It's the very first line of the Haggadah. Avadim Ha'inu Lefara B'Mitzrayim. The Ilu Lo Hotzi HaKadosh Baruch Hu HaSavoseinu Harei Onu Uvaneinu Mishubadim Ha'inu Lefara B'Mitzrayim. So that's the statement already that the story of the Exodus is not just a past event, but it's something that concerns us now, in 1991. So what does the Mishnah suddenly remind itself and comes and says, that not only our ancestors were taken out, but we ourselves, and therefore we say halal. What's the difference between and the statement at the very beginning on page 9 that that first statement is an intellectual statement. We understand the theory and the rationale of this proposition that says, if not for what happened then, then we would still be Meshubadi. The second statement, Bechol Dor Vador Chayavad Amliro Sesatzmo, talks about a personal re-experiencing. And this is much more powerful than the intellectual, than the cognitive achievement with which we start. The cognitive achievement, among other things, is never complete. The personal experience can take hold of a person, can be overwhelming. Now this second, the Bechol Dor Vador Chayavad Amliro Sesatzmo Kibu Yotzom Mitzrayim, results emphasize, results in a special expression of Hodor. It's not part of the Halel. It's not, Halel is not part of the Haggadah. But rather, please listen, the thoughtful, reflective recitation of the Haggadah in its two parts, namely the Sipur and the Halacha, this thoughtful, introspective recitation leads inevitably to the expression of thanksgiving. But this thanksgiving, this hodah, is a corollary. It's a logical, compelling inference, but it's not part of the seaport. It's a corollary. Now, if this is implicit in the Rambam, I want to show you that it's explicit in a statement of the Ritva. The Ritva asks, in connection with the very complicated question, many of you will know this from other discussions, whether or not the recitation of Halel and Pace of Night should be preceded by a Birkas HaMitzvah. That question is much discussed, and I don't want to go into it now. The Ritva asks a more simple question. He says, if the recitation of Halel is so important, how come that the Mishnah doesn't refer to it explicitly. The Mishnah should say, this is the language of the Ritvot, 
Kamosha Omru Shidori Shalov Mearami Ove Odi at Shigomer is Kola Parsha Kula. Who Kamosha Omru Bir V, as the Mishnah says with regard to the fourth coast, Gomer Allah Vesa Halel. If Halel was so important, the Ritwa asks, listen, this is something overwhelming. How come the Mishnah doesn't specifically, explicitly say that just as it says with Doresh Olav on the second coast, they are Rami Ovid Ovi until the end of the Parsha, the Mishnah should also have said, Uposeach Olav Es HaHalel. The Ritva concludes this, we'll come back to this line in a moment, he says, Hashto Psichasa Lo Shaninu Gomro Shaninu. We'll come back to explain the importance of that for the fourth post. But he says, since the Mishnah makes no explicit reference to the beginning of Halel, then we are compelled, the Ritva says, to reinterpret the whole halacha. And the Ritva then makes the following resounding conclusion, which is very provocative but also compelling. I'll read you just with this one sentence. Elavadai... Vadai, ein haluluka nemar al kosheni mitam chovas halel. He says the halel, the two mizmorim of halel, with which we conclude, which we say before drinking the second coast, are not said as part of an obligation of halel, but they are said kederech shir. What's the difference between Halel and Shir? I repeat. Elavadai, ein haluluka nemar al kosheni mitam chovas Halel. They are not said as part of a commandment, a mitzvah, a chova, an obligation to say Halel, the way we say Halel in the morning, the first day of Pesach, but they are said kederach Shir. The difference between Shir and Halel is not just a semantic one, a choice of words, a choice of vocabulary, but it's a conceptual one that expresses a new halacha. I can say this with absolute certitude because I'm assuming that the Ritva has in mind what the Ran quotes in the name of Rav Haigol. Rav Haigon also is addressing the question of why there is no bracha, no birkas ha mitzvah for halel. The truth is, if this were an ordinary recitation of halel, before saying it, we should make a bracha, she could chant of mitzvah, of mitzvah, of mitzvah, of a Well, you always do. You never say halel without preceding it by birkas ha mitzvah. What? Can hear. Yom Atzmaut, you don't say, say uh, Halal. Talking about Yom Atzmaut, talking about the Halal that mentioned in the Mekoros. The Yom Atzmaut, you go talk to Rav Gorin. That's, that's no Halal. You don't make a bracha, it's no Halal. You say that every day if you want. So the, the Ran quotes Rabbeinu Haigon as follows. Rabbeinu Haigon, Kosa v'tshuva, she'en mevorchin al Halal, she'velele hapsochin, ligmur sa Halal, now listen, I'm not concerned with the question of bracha. She'ein anu korin oso b'toras korin, elo b'toras omer shiro. She'kach shaninu rab gamliel, u'lefichoch anu chayovim lehodos lahalel. And listen to this forceful language. Lefichoch im bo adam levareich, if one were to make a birkas mitzvah, and there are many ge'onim, the Ramban, perhaps also, who say that one should, at least the Ramban knows of those who say that you should make a bracha. Here he says, in Bo Adam Levorev, a person starts to make a birkas ha mitzvah before Halel in the Seda, Mishatkin also. You shut him up. Where is that language? That's very powerful, very forceful language, Mishatkin also. What does that remind you of? Where does it come from? Yeah, anybody? What? Omim modim modim. If you say modim twice, the Mishnah says mishatkin also, because modim modim sounds like shtei rishuyos, as if you are questioning the unity of a Kodesh Baruch. Where else do you have mishatkin also? 
in a similar context, more in Megillah, also in Brochus, Haomer al Khan Sikoya Yurach Mecha, again, the Mishnah says, Mishatkin also. Mishatkin also is a very powerful expression. Here, there's room to say, Harezu Machlokes, and Safek Brochus Lohakel. That's the way I would write it. Since it's a Machlokes, Safek Brochus Lohakel, so we don't make a Brocha here, which is the universal rule. But the same Meshatkin also, you shut him up as if he's about to do something heretical. Meshatkin also, as you said correctly, from the context of Haomer Modim Modim, Meshatkin also means that you're about to do something wrong, something heretical. What's the, the heresy? What's the big error here? If you were to make a bracha, then you would be proclaiming that what follows is Hallel, Whereas really what follows should be sheer. Sheer should not be mindlessly, simplistically confused with Hallel. Hallel is commemorative. Hallel is retrospective. Sheer is spontaneous and contemporary. The chapters of Hodah, which we are led emotionally to recite at the conclusion of this is not a command, it's not a chova, it's not a peremptory mitzvah, but it's rather a surging, incompressible response in our path. These chapters of Hodah are the logical outcome of Sikuyetzias Mitzrayim. That's what the Ritva says. And therefore we understand why the Mishnah doesn't say the the same way that it says Doresh Me'arami Ovid Ovi Ad Sof Kola Parsha Kula. Because you're not saying Halel. What you're saying is not something prescribed. It's something that you are led existentially by your own re experiencing of the Sikhwit Yasm Trayim. If you said these pages carefully with the proper meditation and introspection, then you don't need a command. And indeed, there is no command to say Halel. What you say is a spontaneous shear, a spontaneous eruption of your own emotion of Hodah. That's the difference between Ilul or Hotsis Avoseinu, Hari Anu Vanenu Mishubadim. That's a philosophical idea which you can sit in an armchair and discuss. But to say, Lefiha, Chaya Vadam Liro Sasatsmo, Kilu Huyatsami Mitzrayim, this must erupt in shear. I want to ask you, from the vantage point of halacha, never make a point in halacha, you all know the Yiddish saying, what do we gain? What do we gain? What did the Ritva gain? What do we gain by saying that this is not halal but shear? We gain that the shear constitutes one unified mitzvah with the Haggadah. Now, God is a mitzvah d'araisa. V'yigadat olavincha, zochar sayom hazeh shitzosim mitzrayim. V'leil chamisha osu, you all saw the Rambam. Mitzvah, mitzvah min ha-Torah, l'sapir v'nisim min iflos. That's a mitzvah d'araisa. Halel, according to most Rishonim, is d'rabana. So if we were to consider this an ordinary halel, then you'd have an uneven, you'd have a hybrid performance. One part of it is Doraisa, and the conclusion of it is Durabana. But if you say that this is not the ordinary Halel, but this is sheer, like the Rav Haikon says, something which we say not the Torah's Korin, this sounds like something out of out of bris, this distinction. Not the Torah's Korin, not reading Halel, Ella Betoras Omeshira, the Shira which is spontaneous, not which is commanded, which is prescribed, then this shear constitutes one unified mitzvah with the Haggadah. In other words, this is not, as I said, a retrospective halal, but an experientially rooted shear. It's an instantaneous response. And therefore, it's a part of Sikriyatziyas Mitzrayim, which in total, completely, is the Raisa. Our reaction, I want to explain this briefly, to to God's benevolence, the reaction must be immediate. 
benevolence must elicit an immediate response from us. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says, Bikesh HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lassos Chizkiyahu Mashiach, the Sancheir Gogu Mago. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted that Chizkiyahu should be Mashiach, and his fight with Sancheir would be the fulfillment of Milchemes Gogu Mago. Omra Midas Hadin Lufnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ribona Shalola, Umad David Melech Yisrael, Sheoma Kama Shiros Vesishbachos Lufanecha. Lo asiso Moshiach, a kalvachomer, and here it's the midas hadin, which is presenting this argument. In other words, if there is no immediate response in terms of shira, then a an inspired, a sublime inspired situation deteriorates as a result of the critical intervention of midas hadin, of the rule of rigorous law. The Midas Hadin disqualified Chizkiyahu because he did not respond immediately with Shira to Chasdei Kodesh Baruch which he experienced. That's the Midas Hadin. Chizkiyahu she'asisa lo kol hanisim halolu. In other words, he was saved from Sancheri and he was cured, but he was terminally ill and he was cured. She'asisa lo kol hanisim halolu and he did not respond with Shira. Paseu Mashiach, such a person you'll make Mashiach. That's what the Midas Hadin said. And the Midas Hadin prevailed, Kivyachol. Made a Kodesh Baruch Hu change his mind. And the Midas Hadin gave a compelling reason. He says, such a person who did not say Shira, not who did not put on a Rabbeinu Tam's tefillin, who did not do something else, who did not say shira, who did not respond immediately with the proper hodah for God's kindness, such a person is not fit to be designated as Mashiach. That's why we say shira immediately. If we take seriously the Mishnah that says, Chaya Vodom, this is Chaya, and this requires a lot of imagination and a lot of effort in our path. That's a mitzvah, that's an obligation. That, as I say, requires a strenuous exertion of both intellect and of emotion. You need tremendous imagination to take that seriously. If you fulfill that chayot, then the shira is not commanded. The shira comes immediately. That's what the Ritva says, the why how he explains that the shira is not, the halal is not mentioned in the Mishnah along with Dori Shalom Me'arami Ovid Odi and Rabban Gamliel Kol Shalom Ashlosh Advarim Elu and that's why the Rambam is not here being just a good pedagogue, a Malame Dardike when he says Advarim Elu the end of Allah Fahey Advarim Elu Kulan Dikraim Haggadah but he's telling us Atkan Haggadah, the midst of Sipu Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim the two chapters of Halel that follow are not part of the Haggadah. They're a corollary, they're a consequence that is unplanned, as it were, and it comes because we have said the Haggadah properly. This also explains, but I will omit that in a second, that phrase which in some Haggadahs is found and some is omitted, the Rambam doesn't have it, just prior to the saying Halel is the no malafonov, some texts write the ne malafonov, nobody knows what to make of that phrase. Shira Chadasha Halaluka. It's not Shira Chadasha, that's why many omit the phrase and just say the no malafonov Halaluka. And others say the ne malafonov, it was said and we repeat it. The truth is that you can say very simply the no malafonov Shira Chadasha. The Shir Chadasha doesn't mean something new, which has never been said before. It means something that's newly experienced at the moment, like the Pasuk and Tilim, Shir Lashem Shir Chadash. She, I always say this, Shir Chadash doesn't mean a new song. You don't have to compose a new siddha. Most of the additions to the Haggadah are very sophomore, not very inspiring. If you will say this Haggadah with proper thought and analysis, then it can relate to everything. You don't need to have a supplementary Haggadah. I believe the Haggadah should be relevant, but most of the things that are proposed are, are not worthy. 
No halafan of shira chadasha means that by our re-experiencing it, it's as if it's new for the first time. That's what makes it a shira chadasha. I'll just very quickly, if you not tired yet, what about the fourth coast? We've explained Kiddush as part of Sipritius Mitzrayim. We've explained the second as apparently being a three-tiered structure, but really only two. And we explained before Birkas HaMazal as its role in Sipritius Mitzrayim. What about the fourth coast? And here, too, I think we need some redefinition. If, I mean, it follows as day follows night, that if what we said at the end of the second coast, the two chapters of Hallel, that we said at the, second, at the end of the second coast, are not Hallel, right? Then what we say after Birkas and Muslim is not the conclusion of this. See, the conventional view is that you split Hallel. And there's much lumbus that has been expended on that. Why do you split Hallel? You say two misborim before Machlokus Basilum Beshamai and the rest after. But according to this explanation that we've just been operating with, there is no connection. If the two Mizmorim that we said before drinking, before making the bracha, Shegolanu Vigolasawasenu, and drinking the second coast are not halal, but what are they? Sheer, as the Ritva says and as the Rav Haigo, in which the Ran quotes, then what follows cannot be classified, cannot be described as the conclusion of Hallel. If what we said at the end is not ordinary Hallel, then this is not its conclusion, but it's a separate, self-contained recitation. This is what the Ritva meant by that exclamation. Psichasa lo shaninu, if there's no reference to the beginning, Mishnah nowhere says, then Gomro Shaninu, how can you refer to a conclusion if you don't have a reference to a beginning? The Ritva explains, incidentally, that the phrase Gomer Olavesahalel, which is found in the Mishnah, doesn't mean Gomer, finish, but is synonymous with Kore and proves it clearly. There's no doubt that that's correct, that Gomer Sahalel is equal to Omer Olavesahalel or Kore Olavesahalel. Now that this is um, a separate, self-contained unit is clear from the Gemara, I just refer you to it, you can study it in your own later, I think it's here. Gemara, we have here the top of that book, it's on page four of the handout. Gemara introduces, actually, you have to look at the bottom of page, Kuf Yitzayin on the face, is the Mishnah says, Revi'i Gomer Olavesa Halel, that's the Mishnah at the top, sorry, you have it, page four. Revi'i Gomer Olavesa Halel, for Omer Olav Birkas Hashir, and you say the bracha of the shir. And then the Gemara goes on to ask, that's in Kuf Yitzayin at the top, my Birkas Hashir. That's a strange phrase. What does it refer to, Birkas Hashir? And you have a machlokas. Rabbi Yudah says, Yehalalucha, which means that's the conclusion of Halel, the bracha with which we conclude Halel. And Rabbi Yochanan says, Birkas Hashir means Nishmas Kol Chai, has nothing to do with Halel. We do both. How we do it is difficult. How we can combine both meanings of Birkas Hashir. But I think that it's perfectly clear that if indeed what we say in the fourth coast is the conclusion of Halel, if Birkas Hashir, which the Mishnah says, Gomer Kos Revi, Gomer Elav Esa Halel, Gomer Birkas Hashir, meant the bracha that follows Halel the way we say in face of morning, then why didn't it say so? Why talk this way? We all know what the concluding brach of Halel is. There's a Birkas Mitzvah at the beginning, and then there's Melech Muhulo Matishbachos at the end. If this is what is meant, as Rabbi Huda says, then the Mishnah should have said it. The truth is that this phrase, Birkas Hashir, is the strongest, almost irrefutable support for the Ritva. The Ritva doesn't quote it. 
but this is the best support for the Ritva. The Ritva says that the what we call Halel is really Shear. And as I explained to you, the difference between Halel and Shear. Now we understand Birkas Hashir is a phrase for the whole fourth coast. Gomer of Sahalel means you read Halel, what we ordinarily call Halel, then you add to it Halel Hagado, Hodul Hashem Kito, Kilo, and Pasto, and you add to it again, three parts, Nishmas Kol Chai. All of this together is called Birkas Hashir. Bracha, which concludes the Shir, which we said earlier. Is that clear? Birkas Hashir, just plain shot. His Tosis already asks that if the Kaimulan da Filvumakum Shalona Gulavari Hakro, Sarek Lavarev, the Nahagupshita. In other words, then you wouldn't need a special reference to Birkas Hashir. I'm telling you that Birkas Hashir has even further implications, that the phrase must mean something more than just the conclusion of Halel. And that's indeed what Rabbi Yochanan says in the way we fought, have constructed the Haggadah, that we say Nishmas Kol Chai and we say Halel Agodo. According to the Gemara, one opinion, and according to the Chuvas Hagonim, this Halel Haggadah is reserved for the fifth coast, if one wants to have a fifth coast. In the fifth coast, the theme of the fifth coast is Yeshua, the Gula Hasida. We compress it all into the fourth coast because the theme of the fourth coast by itself is already the future redemption. So the fourth coast, and with this I'll just summarize the end, the fourth coast is not dedicated to recollection. It's not historical reflection, but really it's dedica dedicated to a meditation, to a vision. Not historical reflection, but historical anticipation. It's a grand vision which gives legitimacy to our hope for the universal acceptance of what the Ramam calls Dasa Emes. Chaim Briska used to interpret the Pasuk of Tillin, Vani Bechastacha Batachdi, I trust in your chesed. Then, even before anything happens, just as a result of this pitachon, of this trust, Vashir al Hashem, I sing, note the Pasuk, Vashir al Hashem, Ki gomal alai, Chaim said, is ki ilu gomal alai. I'm already saying shira even before I have experienced the chesed. As if I have experienced it. Ki ilu gomal alai, I'm already saying shira. That's the essence of the fourth coast. The fourth coast is a grand vision, as I said. It's a meditation and a vision about the redemption of humanity. You see, in this grand vision, there's no apocalyptic imagery, there's no convulsion of history, that's what you find in many of the additions. Yeah, there's no apocalyptic writing, just a very serene affirmation of Nishmas Kol Chai, that every human being will join in praising the Kaddish Baruch Hu. But in this great universal drama, the Knesset Yisrael has a special role. In other words, the particular and the universal intersect here. This was the big mistake of so many modern liberal thinkers who approached the particularist universalist syndrome as an either-or proposition. And liberal thinkers of the 19th and 20th century said that the universalist is more important and therefore the particularist has to go. That's any of you who are acquainted with modern thought and the practice that resulted from this liberal thought will know what I'm referring to. As if, I repeat, as if this were an either or proposition, and you opt, this is the natural thing, you opt for the universalism at the expense of the particularism. We know how fallacious this is, and we also know empirically that it's been disproven, that it's simplistic. Actually, the two go together. The pasuk that those of you who say in the morning, before starting Baruch Shama, Hodu, right after the Shema in the morning, after Birkus Hashachar, 
ends with a posse from Svanya, Ki etein esten l'shem l'silo b'chola mehoeris. That's the theme that I'm trying to present to you now, that as a path of and as a prelude to the final gula, which will include all humanity, will be a redemption of all humanity, the Israel have a special role to play. We say in Rosh Hashanah, in the davening, the Yomar Kol Asher Neshama of the Apo, what follows? Hashem Elokei Yisrael Melech Mavusa Bakom Mashola. So Velvo always used to say, what do you need Hashem Elokei Yisrael for here? It would make perfect, the perfect sentence to say, the Yomar Kol Asher Neshama of the Apo. That's the equivalent of Nishmas Kol Chai. Everybody who breathes, Yom HaKol Hashem Neshama Ba'apo, Hashem Melech, Umalchuso Ba'kol Mashola. This is the recognition, the universal recognition of God, the oneness of God. So Bevel says, no, this formula is chosen carefully. Hashem, what they will say is, Hashem Elokei Yisrael Melech. The way that they will be led, the way that all the nations of the world will be led to this recognition, to this affirmation, which constitutes the messianic goal of Dasa Emes, according to the Rambam, will be through Elokei Yisrael. They'll point and say, yes indeed, Hashem Elokei Yisrael, Melech, and now we want that Malchuso Vakol Mashola should be universalized. Now, if this is so, for both sides, then there's a rather great, awesome responsibility. We must be deserving of this future Kula. Our moral profile must be so luminous and our moral structure so robust that everybody, even those who will do it begrudgingly, everybody will acknowledge our worthiness for Gula, and therefore we will be the proper exemplar for the universal Gula. In other words, our cumulative record and our contemporary behavior must command respect and admiration. And I want to show you, read to you briefly, a few lines of a halacha in the Smak, the Sefer Mitzvah Godel. The halacha concerns the midst of Hashavah Saveda. Now, many of you know that Hashavah Saveda does not apply to Akvum. The halacha is Avedas Akvum Muteris. You don't have to return a lost object of the heathen. Avedas Akvum Muteris. Already the Rambam says in Perkid Aleph, the Kufus Gazel of Aveda, that one who wants to be Mekadesh as Hashem will return, even Avedas Akvum. The Smag who describes himself as somewhat of an itinerant darshan, a preacher, who went through various parts, particularly came from the north of Europe to Spain, and he writes as follows. I want to read you these lines. Kvod arashti v'golos Yerushalayim asher b'sparad v'lish'ar golios edo. He says, in my drushes to the Jews in Spain and in the other lands of Christendom, Mushar Golios Edo, Ki Ato, now, Sheheri Chagolos Yosem Midai. Golos has already been prolonged too much. He said this at the beginning of the 13th century. So what should we say? Anon Manane Abasre, Ki Hagolos Heri Yosem Midai. As a result of this, Yesh Li Yisrael, Lahavdil, Mehavle Haolam, Velechos bechosamo shel Hakadosh Baruch Hu shehu emes says our behavior should be impeccable. We should follow the path of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, just as His seal is truth. That should be our seal, our insignia. The shalol shakir, loli Yisrael velola goyim, velola hat osam b'shum inyan, not to mislead a non-Jew in any way. Even if it's permitted, like Hashavah Saveda, Shenema She'eris Yisrael lo yasu avlo. The remnant of Israel shall do no iniquity. 
Sheiris Yisrael lo yasu avlo, lo yidabu chazov, etc. And what will be the result of this? Why is this so important? So listen. Yisheyavo HaKadosh Baruch Hu lahoshia. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu will come to redeem B'nai Yisrael. Yomru HaGoyim B'din Osa. This will be the ultimate theodicy. The nations of the world will say the Kaddish Baruch Hu is acting in accord with Midas Hadin. Unlike the Gemara in Sanhedrin, that Midas Hadin said to the Kaddish Baruch Hu, what you're about to do with Chizkiah and Mashiach is not proper. Here, everybody, there'll be no Midas Hadin to question this action. Everybody will say, all the nations of the world will say, Yomru Bedin Asa, Kihem Anshe Emes, they are people of truth, the Torahs Emes Defihem. Avol Im Yisnaagu Im Hagoyim Beramos, then they will say, Rebu, Me Asa Kodesh Barfu, Shebocha Lechelko Ganovim Beramoyim. Unforgettable words of this man. Just to come back to the Haggadah, in light of this, that's the best shot for the Posuk Kalvus Hashem Kol Goyim Shavchu Kol Ha'umim Yigavar Aleinu Chastel. What's the connection? You say, all nations of the world praise God, Yigavar Aleinu Chastel, because His kindness to us is so great, so therefore all nations of the world should praise God. Why? We should praise God. What's the logic? How do you understand it? Hallelujah, Hashem kol goyim. Shavchu kol All nations of the world praise God. Why should they? Ki govar aleinu chasto. Ve'emes Hashem lo'ola. Because His kindness to us is so great, is so overwhelming. The answer is, like the Smag says, that the, if our behavior will be proper, will be exemplary, then all nations of the world will praise God when he shows chesed to us, because they acknowledge this. They will recognize that something great is happening, something proper, historically deserving, that will then have repercussions for the whole world, for all of them. This is also the conclusion of the shir, the upshot of Birkas Hashir, to say, Yehalucha Hashem kol ma'asecha, the old Girsa, you'll still find it in some Sidurim and some Agados, is Yehalucha Hashem Al Kol Masecha. That's worth taking a look at. What's printed here? Stop. Here it's in parentheses. Very good. Page 39. Take a look at line 14. In all Sidurim, the Al has been omitted. All creatures, all your works shall praise you. Then, as a parallel, also shall praise you. So here again, you have the universal and Knesset Israel. But if the Nusach is Yahalucha Hashem Elokeinu Al Kol Ma'asecha, then there's only one subject. So it's not Vachasidecha. But Chasidecha Tzadikim Osei Ritzonecha B'cholamcha Beis Yisrael That's the subject of Yehalucha Who says the praise? Those And here what's important is not the Chasidecha And not the Tzadikim But the Osei Ritzonecha You see What I want to conclude with Is that in saying Halel It's not enough just to praise the Kodesh Baruch Hu but you have to, the praise itself should lead you to imitate a Kaddish Baruch To implement that which you're talking about. Hallel, I once heard from my father-in-law, Hallel is a Shulchan Aruch of Hanhagas HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is the way he put it. And that's one of the reasons why we are committed to say Hallel. The Gemara has a tough time in permitting us to say Hallel. The longer Hallel too much, or is a Machari from the Gade. But one reason for saying Hallel is because by praising acts of the Kaddish Baruch Hu, we learn what it is that we should be doing. The praise itself 
leads us on to the halachta midracha, to a kiyum of following his ways. But independently of that, just in the wording here, in the nusach, yehalalucha Hashem al kol masecha. You can do it with or without the al. With the al is stronger. Al kol masecha. Who praises you for all that which you have done? Those people, those individuals of genuine piety who fashion their lives in accord with your will. Oseritsonecha. Our imitating God does not mean that we become like him. That's impossible, obviously. It's inconceivable. It means that our actions are like his actions. And the consequences of these actions bear the stamp of divine action. That's Yahalluch Hashem Kol Masecha. That's the conclusion of Birkas Hashir. That Oseir Sonecha, whoever they are, whoever they are, they are the ones who say Halit. Why do they introduce the four Banim, Al-Babanim? Another time.